In this video, we are going to look at resonance and force oscillation. All right. So you have already understood that there are a few uh, types of simple harmonic motion. There are a few ways to describe it. We talk about it from the perspective of displacement, velocity, acceleration, and we also looked at the energy. Okay. So when it comes to resonance, it is a unique phenomenon. Okay. But before we can look at what resonance is, we need to look at a certain experimental setup first. So here I have in front of me on the right hand right hand side here, this is a variable frequency oscillator. So it's an oscillator that can vibrate at a frequency that I can control. So normally what that means is this vibrator, this part here is a vibrator, and the vibrator is connected. So I'm going to draw a connection, okay? My drawing is not very nice, but you know, wire got two on, uh, in and out, okay? So this one is connected to something that we call a signal generator. You may be wondering how it looks like. So basically, a signal generator is actually an AC power supply, alternating current, that you can change the frequency. So don't worry, I got you. I found this on YouTube. Where else do I find stuff these days? Hmm? Okay, so here is a variable. This is the sine wave signal generator. So he can turn the knob and adjust the frequency. So I'll pretty much show you what it looks like. So he'll connect this to this one, and you can see there are two wires, okay, and we plug into the signal generator. So if you look at it, or when you plug into the signal generator, observe the metal metal uh, rod on top. You can see it is vibrating. It's t -t 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 Okay, so there's a vibrating because there's a motor down here. This motor will vibrate this stick. So we can adjust the frequency using the knob. Okay, so right now, if you look at this, when I put this value 15, uh, I'm assuming that this is 15 hertz. Maybe it could be 150 kilohertz because I can't see the knob. His hand cover already. But the interesting thing is at certain frequency, you get this. Whoa. Okay, let me pause. Ah. At around 30 hertz, uh, look at this oscillation. Look at the amplitude, it's so big. But if I decrease it a little bit, like just now 27, it will be small. But at 30, it's like this maximum, you see this cone-shaped thing, even the camera cannot capture. At 30 hertz, this one has the largest energy of oscillation. Look at the amplitude, wow, so big. You may be thinking, teacher, I know. If I increase the frequency, from 30, I can increase the amplitude of oscillation. Of course, you know, increase frequency, increase energy. Is that true though? Let's see. He's going to now increase the frequency. Or at least I hope he's going to increase the frequency. So when he increases the frequency, let's say he increases to 50. You will notice that this thing is meh. La. 60 also look quite meh. It is kind of still vibrating, but you don't get that nice large amplitude. And what you saw just now, was resonance. Okay, so let us try to go back to our scenario and see what is happening. So we are back to our notes. Okay, so we have a vibrator, very much like the black color thing. And then what I did was I connect this to a signal generator so that the vibrator can oscillate at different frequencies. And I will tie the vibrator to a string and the string is tied to a spring. Okay, so the thread, this thread here, is connected to the spring. The spring is tied here and the spring will begin to oscillate. So that's the role of the vibrator. So what I'll do is I will start the vibrator signal generator and then I will measure the amplitude of the oscillation. So what I'll do is when this thing move in and out, I guess I'm just gonna define this one. So when this thing move in and out, this metal cube will vibrate up and down. So what I could do is I could install a motion sensor light gate to actually measure the amplitude. So I'm spending some time to talk about the setup because you kind of need to know a little bit of that in paper five in your A2. So from here, what we'll do is we will measure the amplitude of the oscillation of the metal cube. So think about that wire just now. Even when the frequency is higher, or not the exact value, you still have some oscillation, okay? So when it was this one, there's still some oscillation. So we, in this case, we want to be able to measure the oscillation and our job is to try to get a graph 
Okay, so let me draw the graph here. What is the variable that we vary or we change? We are changing the frequency of the vibrator. So I'm just going to call this F. H, Z. Okay, this frequency is the external frequency, okay? The frequency of the vibrator. I uh, write whole thing for you. La. This is frequency of vibrator. And what are we measuring on the y-axis? We change f, we vary f. f is our independent variable. And we are going to measure or specifically uh, independent, sorry, dependent variable. This one is the amplitude. Amplitude of your oscillation. Okay, so how do we measure amplitude? For the metal cube, teacher use I la. I put ruler at the back. Ha! Ah, I put ruler like that. Then I, okay. Well, sure you can, but that's not the most accurate way. So let me show you how to accurately measure this amplitude of the metal cube. So here is how I can measure the amplitude. I will place a card on the metal cube, light card. Uh, hopefully it doesn't add too much air resistance. Okay, so I'll put a card here. And on top, I will have a motion sensor that I'm going to just connect to a CRO. Because the CRO will allow me to read the reading. So what are we reading? Well, the motion sensor, what it does is that it sends out a pulse of ultrasound. Ding, ding, ding. So when the ultrasound reaches the cart, the ultrasound will reflect. Ding, ding, ding. So depending on what the amplitude is, meaning how high the metal cube travel and how low the metal cube travel, the motion sensor can actually measure the difference in amplitude. So this motion sensor will be able to detect what is the highest position of the card and what's the lowest position of the card. It's a little bit like bat and echo location. Okay, so this one here, it, it creates, uh, uses pulses of ultrasound, sound of high frequency. So that's how we can detect the motion of the car. Okay, so we will try to draw a graph. So let's say I set the frequency and then I get a certain amplitude. I change the frequency, I get a certain amplitude and then I plot out the graph. So how would the graph look like? It will look something like this. There'll be a point where the vibration is the most violent. Okay, and this part, this peak right here that you can see from my sketch, this peak here, here is where resonance occur okay and when i do this experiment right i notice that this resonance occur at a very specific value of frequency and you may be wondering what is this frequency what is the resonant frequency well when i want to find that resonant frequency what i do is i turn off the vibrator and then i notice that this resonant frequency is the same as the frequency of the spring when the spring is allowed to oscillate on its own. So right now, there could be two modes of oscillation. One, I turn on this vibrator and I force the spring to oscillate at the frequency of the vibrator. So if the vibrator is 10 hertz, then the metal cube will be 10 hertz. Vibrator 12 hertz, metal cube 12 hertz. Vibrator 14 hertz, metal cube 14 hertz. It's like, okay, lo, I follow you, vibrator. Okay. But depending on the frequency, you get different, different amplitude, as you can see in the graph here. Hmm. But if I turn off the vibrator, so no more changing the vibration. But this system is obviously fully capable of oscillating on its own. So I pull down and I let go. And when I pull down and let go, I notice that if I turn off the vibrator, then it's off. Huh? This metal cube prefers to oscillate at um, 13 hertz. 13 is my favorite number, says the spring mass system. And you may be thinking, teacher, this 13, how to calculate? Ah? Nah, remember um, in the very first few lectures of this chapter, the period of a spring mass system is 2 pi square root of m over k. When you use this equation, or basically from here, when you find frequency as 1 over t, 
This frequency is your natural, all natural frequency. Means if you don't kacau or you don't disturb the metal cube and spring, you don't turn on the vibrator, you don't make it move at a frequency that it doesn't want on its own, it prefers to be 13. And then I notice that the amplitude will be the biggest when this external frequency from the vibrator, resonant frequency, is equal to the natural frequency, which kind of makes sense, right? Let's say, for example, your natural frequency is to wake up at 10 a.m. every day, but your classes start at 8 a.m. So you prefer 10 a.m., but your class start at 8 a.m. So how is your brain amplitude? Meh lah. Okay lah, I, I got some oscillation, but I don't like lah. I prefer 10 a.m. Okay. But or let's say you are a, I prefer 12 noon student. I prefer to start my class at 12 noon. So how's your brain wave at 10 a.m.? Meh. Because if I have my class at 8, it's too early and students are sleepy. If I have my class at 12, it's too close to lunch times and student is hungry. So the best time to have class is 10 in the morning. They get to sleep in, but we can go end class and go for lunch. So the resonant timing of the student is the same as the force timing of the timetable. Then you get maximum amplitude. All right. So this is a phenomena where a system prefers its own oscillation, natural frequency. Outside the system, we force it to oscillate at a different frequency. When will it click? When the force oscillation is the same as the natural oscillation, then bang, magic. That, my friend, is resonance. That is where things happen. Okay, so I'm going to show you a few examples of resonance after the jump. Right, so this is a demonstration. I pull off the Flipping Physics YouTube channel. Very good resource. You can go and subscribe, can check it out. Okay, so here you can see that there is a, <laughs> there's a ball in the swing. And it's going to oscillate. So the pendulum has a natural frequency. Now, if I push this pendulum at the same frequency as the natural frequency, you can see that the amplitude will build up and then it will be higher and higher. Let's say I apply at frequency very fast or frequency very slow. All this, you got no large amplitude compared to this one. Okay. Another example is obviously our beloved lecturer on a swing. Let's look at that. Okay. So what you see right now is another oscillating system. The person at the back trying to push the person in front. Don't know if they recognize her or not. Okay is the force oscillator. She's forcing the system to oscillate. So if she pushes the swing at the same frequency as the spring is going, so when, whenever the spring reaches, the swing reaches her, she pushes it and then the amplitude will build up. This is where you get resonance. Okay, so you get that maximum energy output. So again, two frequencies happening. One is a swing. That would, be, that would be the natural frequency. One is the human at the back. That would be the force pushing. That would be the external frequency. So I emphasize on these terms because next after the jump, we are going to define them. So the first term that we need to be able to define is free oscillation. So if something is free, nobody is forcing it. So there's no vibrator, there's no external frequency, there's no force frequency. So the vibrator is turned off. Okay. So whenever you see the vibrator turn off, uh, free oscillation, uh, this one means that there is no external driving frequency. Okay. And the metal cube, you just pull down, you pull down this metal cube and then you just let it oscillate on its own. So how will we define this? This is not the definition. This is a setting. Huh? We will define this as an oscillation where the only force acting on it is the restoring force. So let's say you displace the metal cube downwards. Then you have like a tension in the spring. The spring is the one that pulls the metal cube back up. So we'll write down that definition now. So this is the definition. Okay. Keywords include 
only external force is the restoring force. There's no other external forces, okay? There's no someone pushing and pulling the spring or the swing. You didn't turn on the vibrator because the vibrator is the external force, right? And also, the oscillation is undamped. So the second one is there is no damping because friction is kind of like an external force too. So because of this, there's no loss in energy. Okay, so when this system exists, okay, this we can say that the system is oscillating at natural frequency. Okay, so we will define this as the frequency of a vibrating or an oscillating body undergoing free, undamped oscillation. So everything is free. So this is your natural frequency. On its own, the spring will want to go at the frequency of 2 pi square root of m over k. All right. So this frequency, if you think about your all your omega, is the same frequency as omega. So this one uh, is the omega is 2 pi f, okay? This natural frequency is this one. Keywords when writing the definition of natural frequency is vibrating body undergoing free oscillation all right so not everyone is free sometimes we have to force certain things to happen so what is force frequency the setting now is we turn on the vibrator okay so the setting now is we turn on the vibrator okay vibrator on already yeah and we allow the frequency to change using a signal generator so i've drawn the setup before okay so this means there is a periodic that means at regular intervals at regular intervals there's a periodic external force in the case of a vibrator there's a motor inside the vibrator in the case of miss ellie on a swing or that basketball in the seat of a swing there's another hand pushing it and that external force is periodic okay so that means now we turn on the external force let me write that down Okay, so this is the definition of force frequency. There's a periodic external force. This is the keyword making the system vibrate at force frequency. So when you want to say force frequency, it will be the frequency of an oscillating system where there's a periodic external force. Somebody else make the system vibrate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is resonance? Resonance is when your force frequency is the same as your natural frequency okay so it occurs when the force frequency is equal to your natural frequency so if you go back to this little graph that i draw it is when the time that you prefer to have class and the time where your class is held so your own preference your natural frequency and the timetable which is the force frequency is the same then you get maximum amplitude two points R natural frequency is equal to resonant frequency number two amplitude is here maximum all right so let me write that down for you okay so think of this graph when the driving frequency driving frequency is equal to your natural frequency because this point here resonance occur okay so it occurs when driving frequency is equal to the natural frequency of the oscillating system and the amplitude is maximum so this is the amplitude axis here is maximum so we will get large amount of vibration okay we do use resonance uh, in different cases okay so other classic cases uh, include singing to a wine glass so let's say you sing to a wine glass for a long time at the natural frequency. So when you flick the wine, wine glass, right, you will hear a sound. And if you manage to hold your voice at the same note as your wine glass, hold your voice, your voice becomes the driving frequency. I don't have a wine glass. I have a coffee glass. So you can hear this. This is the natural frequency of my cup of coffee. 
all right so if i can hold my voice at that pitch for a long time this glass will vibrate and then it will break so you know opera singers can break wine glass because of that no? okay there's a really cool video that again i'll put in the link below you can find different people singing at wine glasses and teaching you how to train your voice to sing to wine glasses so that it breaks okay so this is when you get that maximum amplitude all right so i can hear some of you asking but teacher you know there's this thing called damping and can we take away energy from the system such that um you know we don't get resonance or we don't get that nice resonance well lucky you ask let me show you how this graph will change when you increase or introduce damping into the scenario or you remove some energy from your oscillating system let us look at the graph Okay, this is how the graph or the resonance curve will look like when I increase the damping. So the green graph has the least damping, so the amplitude is the biggest and it has le I mean, more energy. Lah, okay, so light, light damping, heavier damping, I'm just going to call this lighter damping. I mean, it's all relative. It's a factor or a coefficient. Teacher, no damping. Ah, oh, yeah, no damping. Oh. The graph looks very weird. Eh? It's an impossible graph. So a system with no damping is just impossible because, because all of this is the same, same system. So they will have more or less the same uh, curve. It will start from the same value. And if there's no damping, this is how the graph would look like. You know what? Hang on. Let me mark out. The natural frequency so the natural frequency is probably here this is the natural frequency when there is no damping so here this red color point here this one is natural frequency if there is no damping at all perfect system no energy remove you want to know how your graph will look like well, this thing becomes an asymptote. Wow, it looks like this. Leh. It's like a, I like to call this the volcano graph. Leh. But you see, it's going to look like this. All right. So we're going to get something that looks like this. A few things about this graph is number one, it is not symmetrical. No matter which damping you do. Number two, uh, which side is bigger depends on the oscillating system. So it's very hard to tell one. Sometimes the graph will be big then small. Sometimes the graph will be small, then big. Follow the question. Question will draw one for you. Look at the examples. Okay, so there are a few things that happens when you increase the degree of damping. So curve number one is light damping. Curve number two, sorry, curve number one is lighter damping. Curve number two is light damping. Curve number three is heavy damping. And if you want this one, curve number zero. This curve here is no damping. Okay, so as we travel down this trajectory, down, 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 down like this, okay, uh, number one, we remove more and more energy from the system. So there is more damping. So as more damping happens, number one, there is a decrease in amplitude so the amplitude of the graph will actually drop number two the peaks are less sharp okay and number three the resonance frequency what happens to the resonance frequency decreases slightly the resonance frequency actually drops. You can tell from here. See this? Uh, it is like skewed slightly towards the left. Okay? So if you want the equation to help you remember these properties, well, I can talk about, you know, the equation of anything in simple harmonic motion. Total energy is half m a square omega square. You remove energy from the system, amplitude have to drop, okay? Frequency have to drop so that omega will also drop. So it makes sense. And the peak is less sharp. 
because you're falling, 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 but you will start at the same point now, so you don't go up that high. Okay, so what will questions ask of you? They will draw one of this graph and they will ask you, okay, we stick some feathers, what will it look like? Or, okay, I blow some wind, what will it look like? Or, I use the aerodynamic shape, decrease air resistance or drag, what would it look like? So as long as you know how to go from more damping to less damping relative to a given graph, you're okay. And also the turning point or the peak shape should look correct in sketching. Okay. And second thing you need to know is you should be able to tell or read what the amplitude is, tell that this is resonance and know that wherever that peak is, that would be your natural frequency. I mean, your natural frequency lah. Of course, if they draw the second one, just take the turning point. That will be your natural frequency. So natural frequency, if no damping, this is resonant frequency. And this resonant frequency is that turning, maximum turning point when the graph turns downwards. Maximum amplitude, ma, it goes up when it turns downwards. All right. So that is resonance. And before I let you go, one very, very famous resonant example, because can you imagine if you have a lot of energy inside a system and the system is forced to oscillate, catastrophic failure can happen. And that actually happened to a bridge before. Let me show you. Footage should be grainy because this is recorded in 1940s. So what happens was there's a bridge that they built and they forgotten that, you know, things can oscillate, not just in the up down plane it can oscillate in the left right plane so they thought that oscillation can only go like this or like this but they neglected that things can oscillate this way as well you know up and down let us see what happens to the bridge okay so i'm not going to play the whole video i will link it down below you can hear the commentary look at the bridge so what happened was the wind the strong wind which is the external frequency. It's the same as the natural frequency of the bridge. So you look at this poor bridge. You just you just look at this. You look at this. So when the wind frequency is the same as the natural frequency of the bridge, we get maximum amplitude. Even the shock absorber also cannot already. And when you get the maximum amplitude, the bridge will begin to seesaw. And what happens after that? After like 40-ish minutes of this seesawing, that's why people got time to go back and take camera. Okay? Because you can see the wind blowing the trees here. It's not a very strong wind. Okay? It's not like typhoon or anything. But it's a strong enough wind. And then after... Look at the people so chill. 1940s, people had a lot of chill. Okay? So after... 40 or so minutes of this, you know, the cement structure cannot take that much tensile stress. Okay, so you think it will break? Well, as you can tell here, it says bridge collapse here. But, you know, eventually the bridge went down. So, you may be wondering, did anyone die? No, no one died. Uh, in fact, someone went there and saved his dog. Look at this guy, it's like so much chill, man. He's taking his own sweet time. Okay, so there's an engineering channel that talks about what they have learned, what engineers have learned from the bridge to prevent this from happening. Because the last thing you want to, to do driving across the suspension bridge in Malaysia, let's say you go to Penang, is for this to happen. This, this, this is no good, this one, this one. Okay, so that's it. Resonance, we don't want from a structure, so we need to introduce damping to remove the extra energy. But sometimes we want resonance. When do we want resonance, you ask? Another day-to-day -day use, so a not good use of resonance will cause structures to fail and break apart. Good use of resonance, do you, re do you recognize this? Do you do chemistry? This is water molecule. And water molecule can resonate there. It has its own preferred frequency as it twists and turns. And if we apply a microwave at the same frequency as the resonant frequency of your water molecule, what will happen to your water molecule? It will vibrate at maximum amplitude and then your food will get hot and ding, it's lunchtime. Okay, so when the resonant frequency happens for water molecule, 
the water molecule can vibrate left and right, can twist and turn. If this frequency is the same as the frequency of the microwave, the water molecule would vibrate with very violent and large amplitude. A lot of heat energy heats up your food. You get to eat your microwave dinner, lunch, and that's it. So hopefully you get a clear understanding of resonance and check out the links down below. Know how to write your definitions for free oscillation, false oscillation, natural frequency, false frequency, and resonance. And sketch the resonant curve. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something today and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.